New on Curiosity Stream. She was a loving wife, a devoted mother. She also stole atomic secrets and gave them to the Soviets. Meet the woman whose deception kick-started the Cold War on the spy who stole the atom bomb. And... What if they catch you? Then I shall be shot. They're coming! Come back! Relive history's most death-defying escapes. It's impossible escapes. Civil War. Watch now on Curiosity Stream. Annual plans are $20, just $1.67 a month. Visit CuriosityStream.com. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. What's up? It's your boy, V. Ted Smith. Thanks for listening to the Men's Room Daily Podcast. Want more? Check out the greatest podcast in all the land. The podcast. Be sure to subscribe and listen to a brand new episode every Tuesday night. Somebody out there deserves to be recognized. And the men's room knows just who it is. So to you, we say, bottoms up, sailor. You're the toast of our shot of the day. Drink time it is, and as usual, we head to the drink desk and see the throw hill to find out who we're toasting. Yes, indeed. Before we get there, a quick update. We were just talking about Bigfoot, where else they've been. We said Alabama. Apparently, there's a Bigfoot in Florida. But Pierce County has the most Bigfoot sightings of anywhere in the whole world. But chances are, that's just Tammy. Leave her alone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I've been there. It's not Pierce Bigfoot. County. Yeah, come on now. Uh, today, we toast actress <laughs> Jamie Lee Curtis. Now, Jamie, part of Hollywood royalty, if you didn't know, she's the daughter of actor Tony Curtis, who acted in over 100 movies during a six-decade career. And then Jamie, she hasn't done too poorly for herself. She's been in 51 movies, starting with, what was her first movie? Oh, God. Say that, who was it? Jamie, Jamie Lee Curtis. Curtis. Uh, 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 Halloween. Halloween, that is correct, back in 1978. So that was nice. her first movie. And anyway, like a lot of us, Jamie recently explained that she's having trouble getting her wireless earbuds to work, which is one of the mainstays now that everyone's on Zoom, etc. So she put it in her ear, and then she tried fruitlessly to get it to actually work. Kept tapping it, kept checking the reception. Thing is, she couldn't get any sound to come out of her earbud. Now, there's good news. It turns out that her earbuds, they work just fine. The bad news is that she had accidentally put popcorn in her ears instead of the wireless earbuds. Oh, my God. And when she made this discovery, she's like, yep, earbuds work just fine. Can't hear through popcorn. <laughs> God damn. Unbelievable. Well, she even took a picture of it and put it on Instagram, and it's just, it's ridiculous. It's just, I mean, I get it, but it's just two pieces of popcorn, one in each ear. But she's like, I can't get it to work. It still looks sexy, I though. can't hear anything. God, she does, man. I'm 100% with you. What's that? Jamie Lee Curtis? Yeah. I don't know what it is, but it's just like Trading, man, oh man. Well, I mean, a lot of it's those legs. Uh, what was the movie? Uh, True Lies. Tra- see, I was yeah, saying, Trading yeah, Places and True Lies. It, this woman has had a storied, long career, but when you say her name, the first image in my mind is a certain scene from True Lies. Like, yep. Yeah, and Tia Carrera was in that one, too. Uh, her adult age daughter is very sexy. I, you told me that earlier, yeah, man. I've not seen that's it. That's a no-brainer. She's a good-looking woman. And they're all regular. Let me... Uh, <laughs> that's right. Who was the, uh, oh, I can't think of her name now, the chick on SNL, who would always do Jamie Lee Curtis eating all the Activia. She finally pooped her pants in the commercial. Was it Kristen Wiig? Kristen Wiig, yeah. Yeah. Very funny skip. Uh, so let's drink. We pour, th- okay, I'm seeing her daughter. <laughs> all right, well, good gene. All right. Okay. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. 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 Kind of looks a little like Taryn Daly, doesn't she? Yeah. Good Lord, yeah. man. All right. That's what I said. <laughs> I don't care about your running butt with all your activity. All right. So we pour this booze and we drink this booze because we think it's yummy. Yummy! So over the tongue and down the throat to party in our tummies. Down the hola, bitch hola! The men's room presents Profile This. Hey, Stephen Throw Hill, could you please tell everyone how Profile This is played? A short can, Miles. It's a simple game where we share with you a real life news story, something that happened right here on planet Earth. Earth, 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 Earth. And as you listen to the story, based on the stereotypes you believe to be true of people and the decisions that people make, we'll ask you what it is you think makes a story a story. Guess who it is, Ted? James. James, welcome to the men's room. Hola. 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 All right, James, you understand how this here game is played? 
I've heard it once or twice. All right, I'm going to offer you one of three stories. You pick your category. I will read you the story at the end of the story. Multiple choice. You guess what it is we're looking for. So in this case, your story options are the wonderful world of drugs. We have bite me. In other words, what did someone find in their food? And finally, interior decorating, where you guess the foreign object that ended up on the inside of someone. Uh, Let's go interior decorating. Yeah. Ah, yeah. All right, here is your story. We go to Cape Vincent, New York, where a correctional officer at the state prison there found a makeshift weapon on an inmate. Now, the officer noticed the item stuffed inside of the inmate while searching for contraband. The item turned out to be a piece of ceramic that was sharpened on one end and then melted into a plastic cap. The inmate, serving an 18-year sentence for second-degree attempted murder, voluntarily removed the weapon and turned it over to the officer. The inmate was then placed in special housing, awaiting disciplinary charges. Now, the question is, where was he hiding his sharpened ceramic weapon? Was it in his rectum, his urethra? His mouth or his nose? So rectum, urethra, mouth or nose. In one of these locations, he was hiding his homemade weapon. I'm only thinking rectum just because, I mean, I feel like that's like the logical place to hide most things. I feel like logic is a relative term here, but yes, it is certainly the, the go-to for many an inmate. Hmm. Ted? What do you think? What was the weapon again? A piece of ceramic that had been sharpened and then melted into a plastic cap. So I'm so like rectum, a cap. urethra. <laughs> urethra. Urethra. Mouth or nose? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's in his urethra. I don't know why I can't say that. Urethra. Urethra. Because you're thinking urethra. I'm telling you. <laughs> Just think urethra. I want urethra. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking, uh, you know, maybe he's just packing saran wrap in heat. I mean, I get it, but yeah, that's you're going to urethra. Now yeah. you're making me have a hard time. Saying okay, so you're saying that he's urethra. He's going to stick this in his penis. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, James, what are you thinking here? Look, I went wrong yesterday. And didn't take gun in the uh, gun uh, in the vagina. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, rectum, urethra, mouth, or uh, nose? What are you thinking? I might change the mouth because I feel like that's the one place they would look. They would obviously probably look in the rectum at some point. So I feel like they might have. It might be in his throat. So you're going to say mouth? I got, I'm going to say mouth. Okay. We're going to find out what this guy had inside of him and where it was. Was it uh, in his rectum, urethra, mouth, or nose next? That was a tease. New on Curiosity Stream. She was a loving wife, a devoted mother. She also stole atomic secrets and gave them to the Soviets. Meet the woman whose deception kick-started the Cold War on the spy who stole the atom bomb. And what if they catch you? Then I shall be shot. They're coming! Come back! Relive history's most death-defying escapes. It's impossible escapes. Civil War. Watch now on Curiosity Stream. Annual plans are twenty dollars, just a dollar sixty-seven a month. Visit CuriosityStream.com. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. Hey, all of the Cholas, thank you so much for listening to the Men's Room Podcast. And thanks to our pals at the Advocates Law Firm for being great partners. Yes, even you, creepy, creepy, creepy Kyle. Seriously, though, if you'd been injured as a result of somebody else in your car, on your bike, walking across the street, talk to our friends at the Advocates Law Firm and let them help you out. Yeah, they're the best injury lawyers around, and they want to make sure that you're not taken advantage of. Plus, your first consultation is free. It's simple. You get injured, the advocates get results. Contact them today at advocateslaw.com. We return to the men's room with Miles and Thrill. 99.9 KISW. Look our interior decorating on profile. This New York corrections officer found a makeshift weapon from an inmate. As he was checking him in, it was lodged somewhere in his body. So our question today, where was it lodged? Was it in his rectum, urethra, mouth, or up his nose? And James, that is the very question that we posed to you. Now, you started with rectum because you said, look, man, it's prison. That's the, quote, logical place. Then you went from that to mouth. Either way, oh, I'm sorry, James. It was not in his rectum or his mouth. 
Ted, you went with urethra. Give it to me. No. Oh, sorry. Oh. Believe it or not, this dude put it in his nostril. That's unusual. That is very unusual. I'm surprised the guy found it. I guess maybe when you're patting the guy down, you look up. And you see, I don't know. Or maybe he was sticking out a little bit. But uh, either way, yeah, he hit his weapon Jesus. in his nose. Now for all TV news all the time. It's time for TV Time with Ted. And now, because your pathetic life is confined to countless hours in front of a talking box. I'm again. The Men's Room presents TV Time with Ted. Ah! All right, your choices today will be Seth Myers. Seth Myers, The Jimmies, Jimmy Kimmel, Jimmy Fallon, Trevor Noah, Ooh. or Ted Smith. Is it Ted or is it late night? That's one of those guys that seems a professional writer scrubbing the monologues each and every night. It is up to you to determine, is this an actual late night joke and from whom? Or could it be a V. Ted Smith original? In New York City, it's been announced that officials are working to reopen Broadway. So it'll feel like pre-pandemic days because you still can't get a ticket to Hamilton. <laughs> Seth Meyers. Jimmy Fallon. Ted Smith. Ted Woo! Smith. Right out of the gate. Nice. Yeah, I got to too. see that. Thanks. Thanks. I joined the lottery to get tickets to Hamilton and we got good luck, babe. I won. Like, God damn it. Now I have to go. I had a buddy that fell asleep during it. I mean, it's... If I have to see a Broadway play, that's probably the one, but I'm okay if I never see one again. I'm not too far off of that. I know. It was just funny because we were hanging out at the bar beforehand, and I was like, you guys, where are you guys going? They're like, well, I'm going to see Hamilton. I was like, have fun. I heard it's going to be great. Next time I saw him, he's like, I fell asleep halfway it's through. Still, there's still musicals. Yeah. Like, it's like, it's hey, 100% I've, I've heard the same thing. Look, it's Rock of Ages. They're singing rock songs. You will like it. it sucked. Well, guess what? Karaoke, they sing a lot of rock songs. It does not make it good. You will love the Book of Mormon. It's funny. It's musical. I saw Book of Mormon. It's okay. But I also had a 22-ounce cider at half. <laughs> a company has created a new laptop prototype with seven screens. I can't wait to be on the plane with some guy in the middle seat that opens that up. Mind if I use the armrest, too? Wow. <laughs> Yeah, Fallon. Yeah, that's Fallon. Get this. A company has created a new laptop prototype with seven screens. I can't wait to be on a plane when some guy in the middle seat opens that up. <laughs> Not if I use armrest tubes. Or... Uh, Governor Cuomo says they're working on a plan to reopen Broadway. So for those of you who have been dying to see Hugh Jackman in The Music Man, now you can literally do that. Seth Meyers. Found. Kimmel! Governor Cuomo says they're working on a plan to reopen Broadway. So, for those of you who've been dying to see Hugh Jackman and the Music Man, now you literally can do that. The company that makes Aunt Jemima has announced products uh, will be sold under the new name Pearl Mining or Pearl Milling Company starting in June. While over at Cream of, Cream of Wheat, they changed their name to Grits for White People. <laughs> Seth Meyers. Seth Meyers. Ted Smith! Oh! Yeah! Two! Damn right! Good one. Grits for, grits for white people. <laughs> it's a faker. <laughs> oh, New York City will resume indoor dining Friday ahead of Valentine's Day. It's the perfect way to tell someone, I love you, but I'm indifferent to your grandparents. <laughs> Seth Myers. Yeah, Seth Myers. Seth Myers. New York City will resume indoor dining on Friday ahead of Valentine's Day. It's the perfect way to tell someone, I love you, but I'm indifferent to your grandparents. <laughs> I, was, I was working on a lot of breakfast jokes. Yeah. I saw that. Trying to work in a log cabin one, but... I don't think they're going to change that. They named it after a log cabin because Abraham Lincoln <laughs> right. lived in one. I don't think anyone's offended by it. Somebody is. Log cabin. What log. do they mean by that? Nothing at yeah. all. Mm. I grew up in a tent. <laughs> <laughs> like, all right, all right. Uh, this is kind of good news. Also, by the way, uh, some crazy things from the Super Bowl ratings. All right. Number one, the ratings were much better in New England than they were in Tampa Bay. I can believe that. Yep. Which doesn't shock me. Also, you're covering a, uh, the top cities for the Super Bowl were Kansas City, Boston, Tampa, and Minneapolis. 
Okay. Okay. Well, that's well, the only way for them to even I mean, pretend like they'll be there. Boston is a huge sports town. No that's exactly it. It is. But I also read today that uh, the ratings it was like the lowest they'd been in 10 years or something. Really? Yeah. Huh. Well... I think a lot, you, well, I don't know if a lot of it, some of it, you know, normally the two weeks leading up to the Super Bowl, after the championship games, the NFL is all over the place. Right? I mean, they plaster everything, everything looks like a good time, all the ads they take out, but because no one could, they couldn't do a lot of the interactive stuff they normally do. It's not out of sight, out of mind, but they're just, it just wasn't hyped to say. In spite of Mahomes and Brady and all that, I think it was more, I mean, obviously it did well enough, it's not all football peers, but there was no additional fun, you know what I mean? I think part of it too is that anytime you have a defending champ going back in, like right. people are like, like, all right, you know what I mean? But you saw, mm-hmm. like, if you're not the casual, like, trust me, it just didn't reach a hundred million. Still had ninety some. They million. were fine. So it was right. a monster number. But I also think too, like, maybe you've you've already seen the Chiefs and like Tom Brady's on a different team. But for the casual fan, it's just like, yeah, of course Tom Brady went and 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 won. You know, right. it's like asking right. me something about Star Wars or whatever. Like, yeah, all right. I bet I bet you like it, and there's some new ship. <laughs> right. Well, right. I, I, will, I will say this. As far as Boston having better TV ratings than Tampa, sure. I can tell you this for a fact. If I call a relative that I have in Florida, and I have a few, uh, what are you doing today? I was just going to go and play some golf, you know, hang out. Oh, you got your day off? Oh, yeah, it's Saturday. Oh, it's Saturday. Oh, yeah. Right. Half the time, the people that I talk to down there do not know what day it is because they're retired. Yeah. They're just in that zone. They don't keep track anymore. And it's an outdoor place. Yeah. Right. Well, that's, I mean, that's the other reason, too, and I've talked about this before, that L.A. is not, like, the biggest football town in the world. Because it's L.A. You can go to the beach on Sundays, right? right? It's an outdoor place. San Diego's much San Diego's yeah. smaller. So it's like, dude, the beach is 200 yards away. We're- right. Like, when you're when you're dealing with, uh, you know, we, we talk about Boston. I mean, even Washington and Baltimore, Boston, New York City, like, most of the football season, after you get past like October, like it's kind of cold and miserable. It's horrible, and people aren't right. going out and doing stuff. Plus, you just have the ability. Like I think I was talking about it on uh, the podcast recently. New episode out, by the way. Uh, <laughs> like the first time I went to Orange County, right? The first weekend in May is always a massive deal. You're going to have the Kentucky Derby. Oh, right, right. You're yeah. going to have a massive uh, boxing fight, right? And there's something else. Like that's as far as springtime goes. Like that's one of the best like weekends. So I go to visit a friend. They live down in uh, Dana Point. And I, I'm telling everybody I'm going down there. And they're like, you going to watch? I was like, oh, yeah, we're going to watch this and that. And then I remember, like, Saturday morning, we drove up to Laguna Beach. And I'm I'm just drinking at a hotel bar on the roof. And she's like, do you want to go watch those sports? I was like, F no. <laughs> right. right. This is why, great. Why would we go inside? We're on a deck. I'm drinking sangria. Right. Yeah. Visit family in Buffalo. You're like, hey, let's turn the game on. Yeah, let's watch horses go in a circle. <laughs> Well, it takes five I, I minutes. Should, I should diminish horse races, but I'm just saying, like... Well, I mean, that is what they well, do. Well, it's two I, hours leading up to five minutes. Right. I mean, right. think about it. At any time in your life, right? If you grew up where we did, right? Uh, you know, Or even out here. In the summertime, you go to lakes or rivers. Everybody's You out. might go to the beach, but the, the beaches in Washington aren't as swim-friendly. Right. But, like, on the East Coast, you go to the beach and stuff. Well, there's baseball games on and everything you want to watch, but eh. when you're at the beach, you're just thinking about having fun. Right. Or, You'll watch the Sunday night game. Yeah. Yeah, that's about it. Mm-hmm. Right. Or maybe they'll have people over and play cards out on the deck. Neat crabs. <laughs> Planning a whole trip now. Uh, the top two ads for the Super Bowl were for the same company. Uh, the Rocket Mortgage ads with Tracy Morgan. Those ranked one and two. Everybody loved them. Uh, Amazon came in third with its Alexa ad starring Michael B. Jordan. Michael B. Jordan. Tell you what. Does anybody dislike him? I'm sure somebody does, but you know. I guess, but I know a lot of people, salty people, that have reasons. Haters. Just, yeah, I, I include myself in that way. It's like with Aaron Rodgers, I have no real reason, just don't like him. But I, I think one of the things that Michael B. Jordan is smart about, you know, once you're an A-level actor, any kind of celebrity, the fewer interviews you do, the better off you're going to be. Yeah, I, you I know, mean, He's not either tweeting a bunch of crap, he doesn't do a ton of interviews, and when he does, he's pretty business about it. Yeah. And also, there's... If you already don't like him, you will continue not to. If you do like him, you'll continue to. He doesn't do any of the, he doesn't do the celebrity stuff. I, I guess I'm just saying, like, I, I don't know anybody that's been like, you know, I don't like is Michael B. Jordan. Well, he was Creed, man. Creed? Rocky's little buddy, mm-hmm. man. Right. He was in Black Panther. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, he was a bad War- guy in that. 
Right. Oh, he's warm up. But you're still like, That's I, what I'm saying. I like But him. he's a cool yeah. bad guy, right? Yeah. You were the cool bad guy. I mean, right. You're supposed to hate him, but it's like, yeah, damn, he's cool. Michael B. Jordan. He had a small, uh, uh, small acting role in The Wire. Season four with the kids? I don't know. Maybe. I didn't realize yeah, yeah. he was in The Wire. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so he was on there, uh, the M&M's commercial, basically all the stuff everybody liked. Uh, Will Ferrell did that General Motors ad where they're making fun of, uh... Norway. Of Norway. Yeah. Now, I'm on a big Norway kick because I've been watching Lilyhammer on, uh, Netflix. Did you see the response Norway had to... Weren't they mad Was it tongue-in-cheek or was it understand? Completely tongue-in-cheek. Okay. It's Will Ferrell. I mean... Right, because right, Will Ferrell's saying it's like, I hate Norway... Like, you guys think you're so great with your electric engines. Like, we're going to have right. some and this and that. So this one is like the, I can't remember, some title, right? I don't know. She's Minister of whatever. Something. To Norway. Transportation. Maybe. So it's like, oh, sorry, like, that we already have, like, the most electric vehicles and this and that. And then she's like, you know, we try to teach people uh, to prepare themselves for when they go to the United States. Pay tuition. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Damn. Right? So it was tongue in cheek, but just like, then some girl comes in and was like, we're inventing like a new electric engine. She's like, not now. And then she's, and then the other girl's like, but I'm, a, even though I live here, I'm American. I don't have to pay tuition. She's like, uh, yeah, don't bring up that part. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, I don't know if it's the show or whatever. I'm going to go there. Norway. Yeah. All right. I have zero mm-hmm. desire. I mean, I wouldn't turn down a trip, but. I will not say the band we were talking about. You said, would you would you go to the concert if the ticket's free? Absolutely. Would you pay money for it? No. Yeah, I mean, keep in mind, I'd like to combine this with like answer with oh, like Norway's okay, not yeah. good on its own. So you're gonna stop for two or three days then. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I just want to go see it. So Norway is like I don't know, it's like mayonnaise on the sandwich. You want the sandwich, I'll do mayonnaise if it's there. That's what Norway is. I want to explore places that don't have snow. Yeah, that yeah is, see, that's my deal. I kind of want to go there when it's snowing. No. 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 Oh, what's wrong with you? I hate it. I, I know you guys do. I like it. Yeah. You're a fool. Yeah. I want palm trees mm-hmm. and birds yeah. I mean, that I actually like tropical, sing and don't squawk. I like tropical places, too. I want to think, did I lose my glove? <laughs> <laughs> I still have my, my glove. What a great vacation. I should have put one more layer on. Yeah, I mean, you're right, and the food probably sucks. Yes. Maybe it's just as I'm watching you been to Ballard? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I like the idea of... I like the idea of... Well, you don't want fish eyeball soup? <laughs> yeah, just like sitting in a cold like bar that's from like 1,200, yeah. drinking some weird liquor. How about a warm bar from 1,500? <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. I'm good. There's no spice cabinets there. Uh, Miles, good news. Yes. Do you have uh, Do you have about 15 million extra dollars laying around? No, not today. Okay. All right. Well, I thought maybe you'd want to buy the uh mansion the Rose family gets kicked out of at the beginning. Of- oh my god. That's only That's one crazy. episode. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it costs around 15 million. Jeez. It's in uh uh it's in uh it's called La Belle Manson. Mm. Mansion. Okay. La Belle, that means uh, Patty, French and Canadian. Quebec, probably, right? <laughs> it means uh, the Belle. Actually, it's in Ontario. Oh, Ontario. Okay. You uncultured piece. Jesus, man. No wonder you can't go to Norway. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, but anyhow, that place is 24,000 square, square, square feet. Square feet. <laughs> you were it looks like so the, Beverly, uh, the, the Beverly Hillbillies place. 12 bedrooms, 16 bathrooms. I don't know why you need more bathrooms than bedrooms. That seems crazy. I would do number one's in this bathroom, number two's in bathroom seven and nine. Yeah, it's a one bedroom, two bath. What? Right. A home theater, a wine cellar, a billiards room, which is also where the holes are, <laughs> a fitness gym, outdoor swimming pool, and an indoor swimming pool. Yes. Dig it, dig it. See, this yeah. is where you wanna this is where you wanna quarantine. Yeah, if you got a quarantine, that's yeah. the joint. Who cares? We just need the fifteen mil. Yeah. You can do it. Yeah, that'd be expensive. But you can get up there. Uh, let's see. Sama Hayek, she's working on a producing a show for HBO Max. Do you know what it's about? Oh, I'm I did read about her this. breasts. Yes, it's it about, is. It's about breasts. Oh. Yeah, it's about talking boobs. I was actually joking. You're being serious. It's called, Jesus. A, it's called a boobs life. All right. <laughs> I wonder what that's like. It's based on a book uh, by Leslie. Yeah. 
Okay, Leslie Cha, well-known yeah. author. Yeah, L E H R. I mean, have your Larry. life in a holster. Right, it says it's a comedy about a woman turning 40 and in crisis who life gets turned upside down when, who, when her boobs start talking to her, forcing her to look at herself in a completely different light. Now, for three of us in here, we know this, we've seen this one. When gills, when, if you have gills and they start talking to you, it's yes. really going to spin your life around. It's the T. Uh, Sama says, quote, in a boobs life, we use breasts as a metaphor for the constant judgment women are submitted to. Uh, creating a collective sensation that no matter uh, what we do, we are never enough. So you're doing a show about boobs. That will cure that. In this show, we give breast a voice that will take us through the life of a woman give from, a this ball. from a unique pers- perspective that we often dare to see. It's probably pretty funny. I'm sure it is. It'd be like having a narrated penis, you know? It, your penis talks to you all the time. Once but you, you actually hear it, you know, like like the Wonder Years. It's narrated by, based on the thoughts of... Do you narrate it or does your penis narrate Your penis narrates it. Right. In my case, it would be Tommy Lee who would be doing the talking. Let's imagine, man, oh boy, things change when he turned 13. He but always I, wanted me at attention. I feel like my, my penis would be like, where's our stimulus check? <laughs> Why are we unemployed? <laughs> or it what could did be we like, do? Or, or, it could be like, or it could be like Gilbert Gottfried. Get me out of here. I could not wait for him to unzip his pants. My friends are nuts. You know what? I would have Bernie, uh, Bernie. Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders. That would be my narrator for my penis. I told him not to go commando. And then he zipped me up. And it hurt. And then he unzipped it. And it hurt again. Thank God I was circumcised. That's a good call. I don't know how it, who I'd have narrate it. Is it just that, or the uh, do the berries get voices, too? Uh, the they might make a cameo. They're like, they're like the neighbors that pop their head over the fence. <laughs> right. yeah, or who are the old guys in the Muppets? Uh, Waldorf, Waldorf and Statler, yeah. Yeah. He thought he was going <laughs> to... Uh, people always make fun of Hallmark movies, right? They're like, oh, they just pump them out, blah, blah, blah. And make money. I will say, in a recent interview, and I kind of respect this, uh, Candace Cameron Burke... She addressed it, uh, that anybody can be in the movie. She said, quote, I get that all the time. How hard is it to be in a Hallmark movie? Like, can I be in one? She said, and I'm like, are you a professional actor? No. Then no, you cannot. Right. So a lot of these actors aren't as big as the shows they were originally on. But right, like, it is just kind of a throwaway joke. Like, oh, anybody can have a Hallmark movie. She's like, well, we're still producing, like, movies in Hollywood and working. It's like, like the guy, it's like, I, it's like the guy in one. It's like the guy watches the Olympics and goes, I could be on the bobsled team. I could get gold. But how hard is it? Okay, then go do that. Right. It's like watching pro tennis, you know. I could do that. Oh, oh by so the easy. way, the Australian Open is uh, on ESPN2. I was watching a little bit of it uh, last night. Huh. Okay. All right. So uh, in a shocker, Serena's already dominated. Yes, I believe that's that. how that goes. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Tim. We appreciate it. You are listening to The Men's Room. New on Curiosity Stream, she was a loving wife, a devoted mother. She also stole atomic secrets and gave them to the Soviets. Meet the woman whose deception kick-started the Cold War on the spy who stole the atom bomb. And... What if they catch you? Then I shall be shot. They're coming! Come back! Relive history's most death-defying escapes. It's Impossible Escapes, Civil War. Watch now on Curiosity Stream. Annual plans are $20, just $1.67 a month. Visit CuriosityStream.com. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. Fiddlesticks! What, Wilbur? We just got hit and I think my back has all been out of shape. You gotta talk with those whippersnappers at the Advocates Law Firm. They're the best injury lawyers around. What? Pop down, Clarence! Abner's telling me about the lawyers and the advocates. So what happened to you, Abner? I was walking across the street with the light when some young punk came screeching around the corner. I lost a toe. What? Shut it, Clarence! If you get injured, the advocates get results. AdvocatesLaw.com The Men's Room returns with Miles and Thrill. Now, let's see what's happening in the real world. All right, here we go to Chicago, where a man who's not slacking comes up with a unique way to save his shoveled parking space. Meanwhile, Jacksonville residents want to shut down the fragrance factory that apparently makes the area a stinky place. Man pulled over with fake license plates that read, Not stolen, okay? 
When an 18-wheeler hauling human waste hits you, expect a brown and stinky spray. And someone stole the door off an elevator in Shoreline. It's time for your headlines. Now, it's time to hit the head. Lines. Here's my car. Hey, it's up, sorry. We're staying right here in Washington State and head to Shoreline where a burglary has taken place. King County Sheriff got a call about a burglary at a nearby apartment building. What they found when they got to the scene was the door of the elevator had been stolen. They're currently still on the lookout for the door, which could cost anywhere between seven and ten thousand dollars to have replaced. I mean, it's not funny, but it's funny. Right for an elevator door. What exactly is your pure your here? inconvenience? Right, it's oh, not like you're gonna sell fair. it on the black market. It's just what would be a douchey thing to do? And like that kind of tops it. I, I don't know. Like, right. I, you have an elevator somewhere that needs a door, and you got to find the exact same one, and you steal the door? I mean, and what a skill to have. I just know how yeah. to dismantle this elevator door, which i got to imagine it's it's got some sort of a simplicity to it. But when you look at it, when's the last time you've actually tried to identify how to take an elevator door off of it? To be fair, I never have, Mike. Mm-hmm. Right. I, I'm with you. That, it's stupid, but I'm like, how the hell do you take off just <laughs> right? Or just why? This is one guy that why? used to work at a place that had an elevator, and he knows how to do it. He yeah. said, you know what? Screw this place. I'm going to take their elevator door. Wouldn't that be funny? (laughs) In other news, we had a story a little while back about the lengths that people will go to keep their shoveled parking spaces. We go back to Chicago for this one. In an attempt to inform other drivers that this particular shoveled parking spot is claimed, one man froze a pair of his jeans standing upright in the parking spot. Looking at it, it looks like the invisible man wearing only jeans is vigilantly guarding his spot until he returns. I thought it was pretty awesome. I looked at it. It's great. It's cool. Mm -hmm. Right. It's innovative. I'm I'm innovative. I'm a fan. I still take his parking space. As long as it works. I mean, right. the key is just, please don't park there. Right. I don't, have to, kill you. I don't have to shoot you. Down in Australia, officers, officers stopped a car driving without his lights on. After they stopped the car, they noticed something a little bit off about his license plate. The characters were hand-drawn. The driver had painted the entire plate white and hand-wrote his own letters and numbers and then finished it by writing at the bottom, quote, not stolen, okay? <laughs> Upon further investigation, that's not the only offense the driver was committing. He was also driving while disqualified, unregistered, and uninsured. And all these issues racked up quite the uh, quite the amount of fines for him. But the car was not stolen. Right. It that, wasn't that's stolen. The thing. He told the truth. Everything else about him was absolutely effed up. But at least the car was stolen. By the way, why would you think that just handwriting numbers on a license? Because there was an actual license plate. Right. And he, like, painted over whatever it was. Right. Just kind of invented his own license plate, which might already, like, you know right. what I mean? Like, was this Australia? Uh, yes. That's what I figured. <laughs> I, just, I, just, I just looked at the way they worded the story, and I was like, this has got to be Australia. Yeah. I hope it's at least his actual license plate. I hope so. I don't because know what I, happened I, I to, think, like... I think they let the guy go. <laughs> that was he, another thing where I was like, this has got to be Australia. So he won the fist fight. You're like, look, dude. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. Just go get a real license plate. Next time I catch you, you're in trouble. Uh, on the Irish Sun's website, there's an advice section where people can call in with their uh, with their issues, and this one's a doozy. He and his wife are both in their 60s and had a healthy sex life until she became afflicted with MS. Since then, her daughter has come to live with him and uh, with her son so that they can help care for her mother as well as his wife. And uh, uh, the two of them have gotten close to the point to where she's asking questions relating to the two of them possibly having relations with each other. And his wife even went so far as to suggest that the two of them explore those options and uh, rather as she can't satisfy him physically. I read the story not uh, sure what to this do. morning. I was like, uh, I mean, it's obvious what he wants to do. But, it's, you know, it's like temptations there. The problem is the wife's like, oh, please have sex with my daughter. Right. But like the decency and I'm like, I, I mean, she's good looking and all that kind of thing. But this just feels messed up. This just isn't for me. And that is it for your headlines with that. Mike Hawk is back. Thank you, Mike. We appreciate our 50th anniversary. We continues. Big dummy on the way. And the head chef is back with Ted's meat and potatoes. Yes, indeed. It's all true. But in the meantime, we be all up out this bitch. So until next time, please do what you do best. And for Aletha's sake, stay beautiful. This room has been taped before a live studio audience. Wardrobe and makeup provided by Mantastic Limited. This has been a presentation of the Men's Room Radio Network. Oh, man! A double flush production. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. $20 million. $19 million. 
$6 million. These are all awards recovered for clients of Phillips Law Firm. To win big, you have to fight big. And Phillips Law has been fighting the too-big-to-fail insurance industry for decades. Not every case will have a multi-million dollar outcome, but Phillips Law will fight just as hard to recover the outcome you deserve. If you or a loved one has been injured in a car accident or on the job, call or click today at 1-800-JUSTICE or visit justiceforyou.com.